Part 2 In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 14-21, through 21, it says, I thank God that I baptized none of you, but Crispus and Gaius, lest any should say that I baptized in my own name. And I baptized also the household of Stephias. Besides, I know not whether I baptized any other. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with the wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of no effect. And right here it says, Paul did baptize, but that wasn't the important part of his ministry. It was to preach the gospel, and not with fancy words that you get from going to college so you can sound intelligent. You're not going to reach people that way. The Bible says in John 6.44, no man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me draw him. They're drawn by the Father, which is the Holy Spirit. So men are drawn by the Holy Spirit, not how intelligent you can sound, or how many letters you got before your name or after your name. They're drawn by the Holy Spirit. In verse 18, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. The ones who are lost don't understand, and they're headed to hell. For the Christian, it is our strength to be like, like Jesus. This is what it says here in verse 19. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and I will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. He's saying for those who have their own religion opinion on how to get saved, not to listen to them. God will take care of them on the day of judgment. How do we know if a religion is given their own opinion? Check them out in the words of God. If you can't find it in the word of God or if it goes against the word of God, then they're given their own opinion. And that's how we can know if they're a false religion. Verse 20. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world. So the Lord is saying, where is the scholars at? The, re the religious leaders, the educated ones, the debaters of the world. The Lord will make them look foolish, he says, and he will. Verse 21, for after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. You know, the hardest people to reach are not the wicked ones. It's the ones who think they know it all. And there are the ones who won't know him. Only those who believe in God's foolish ways are going to believe. Now let's go back to verse 17 of 1 Corinthians 1. It says, For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. If baptism was necessary for salvation, then Paul could have never had said this statement. He would have had to say, For Christ sent me to preach and baptize. But that's not what it says here. John chapter 4 verse 1 and 2 When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself baptized not but his disciples, his disciples are doing the baptizing, not Jesus is what it says here. Luke 19 Verse 10, it says, For the Son of Man, which is Jesus, is come to seek and to save that which was lost. If we would have had to get water baptized to get saved, then Jesus would have done whatever was necessary to bring sinners to salvation. He would have been baptizing them to show. In Galatians chapter 3, verse 26, 27, and 37, for ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For those of you who had, who have had their babies water baptized, you haven't read this verse. Because how many babies do you know at that age or, or already have faith in Jesus? Right here it says, For ye are children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. By faith. Verse 27. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Do babies know anything about putting on Christ? No. 
So baby, baby baptism is not biblical. It's not in the scriptures. Uh, the religions that do it, they're doing it their own way. In Acts 8, verses 26 through 37, the angel of the Lord spoke to Philip and told him to go down to Jerusalem, and there he would meet an Ethiopian man who was coming to worship, and on his way he would be reading about the prophet Isaiah. We see here that the man he's talking about is a religious man because it says he was going to worship and he was reading the Bible. Philip asked, do you know what you are reading? And he said, no. He asked Philip to help him understand. Philip told him about the good news about Jesus. As they were going along, the eunuch saw some water and asked, why can't I be baptized? And Philip told him down in verse 37 of Acts 8, he says, if thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So this grown religious man, seeking God's will for himself, and Philip said, Do you believe with all your heart that Jesus is the Son of God? Then you can be baptized. So before Philip would baptize him, he had to find out, Are you a believer? Have you given all your heart to the Lord? And when he said yes, then he said, Okay, you can be baptized. Philip had him make a confession of faith before he said yes. Just like a religious leader in uh, John chapter 3. He didn't know anything about heaven to be born again, to make it to heaven. In John 3 verses 1 through 6, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. Nicodemus was a religious leader. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Now I want you to notice that he came by night. Because he didn't want his religion to see what he was doing by trying to find out the truth. He saw that Jesus was truly a man of God. I say man because he called him teacher. He didn't call him Lord. And in verse 3, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. And Nicodemus didn't understand what born again means. So Jesus tells him. He says you have to be born of the water. And that's speaking about the mother's water sack. Because of what he says in verse 4. About going back into his mother's womb. The water sack. These verses say nothing about water baptism. So he has done step 1. Which is being born of the water. By his mother. Now he says but but you also need to be to receive the Holy Spirit. Verse 6. That which is born of the flesh, the water, the water sack, and that which is born of the Spirit, is spirit. We have devout religious people out there, and they are lost. Some of them know they are, and then some of them are blind, and they don't know the truth. Because they study the religion they're in instead of studying the Bible. What is water baptism? These two verses are from the Great Commission. In Mark 16, 16 it says, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Also in Matthew 28, 19, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Now the baptism he's speaking about here is water baptism. And we find in Matthew chapter 3, verses 13 through 15. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John, to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me? John was protesting, because of what he knew about Jesus. He knew who Jesus was, because in John 
chapter 1, verse 29, John says, He seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. So John knew that Jesus was the Lamb of God. And that's why he protested. He said, I need to be baptized of you. But did Jesus baptize him? No. Verse 15. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. Remember, Jesus was about the work of the Father. He started when he was 12 years old. In Luke chapter 2 verse 49, And he said unto them, This is Jesus speaking to his parents, How is it that ye sought me? Wist ye not that I must be about my Father's business? This was only one of many things that Jesus was showing us, the things we should do if we want to follow him. Jesus didn't get baptized because he was a sinner. That's not why he got baptized. He just says, he was doing it to show us well, this is what we ought to do. Water doesn't cleanse us. It says it in 1 John 1, 7. But if we walk in the light, and he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Let me say that again. The blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Matthew 26, 28. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remissions of sins. It doesn't say anything about being water baptized here to get forgiveness and to be cleansed. The blood, the blood washes our sins away. And it's the blood that we can get forgiveness of our sins. It's all Jesus. It's not Jesus and. There's religions out there that put except Jesus and. There is no and. The religions that put and, they're weakening who Jesus is. I've said this before in the earlier teaching. When they put an and on it, they weaken who Jesus is. It's like he can't do it alone. You're going to have Jesus and something else. It's not true. Let's not forget what it says in Ephesians 2.8. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. We're saved by grace, not because we did something by getting the water baptized, and that's why we're saved. It doesn't say that here. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25 and 26. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church, and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. What is the washing of water? It's God's word. That's what it says right here. His word is what cleanses us. His blood, his word. It's all Jesus. Titus 3, 5. Not by works of righteousness. It's not how good you've been is what he's saying. Which we have done. But according to his mercy, he saved us. According to his mercy, he saved us. By the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. So again, we're not saved by being good. He's given us mercy to become one of his children. But we first have to receive his word so we can be washed. And then he gives us the Holy Spirit. James 1.18 Of his own will begat he us with the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. It's God's will to give us a chance of being his with his word of truth. 1 Peter 1.23 being born again, not of in, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. How do we get born again? By the word of God. Let's look at Mark again, that we read up ahead. Mark sixteen sixteen, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. If believed and baptism goes together, then the last part of that verse should read, But he that believeth not and isn't baptized is damned. But the last part of that verse said, He that believeth not shall be damned. Yes, we should believe that you have to do. You have to be a believer. 
you have to have faith in the word of God on what it says. But it also says, and to be baptized. Well, you could almost say anything there. You could say, believe and go to church. Yeah, that goes there. Or believe and pray every night. That can go there. Or read the Bible every night, and etc. Just saying, mean, you can keep going. But yes, believe was the main thing. But the baptize, that's he could have put anything there. Because if you if you just look at this one verse, then that means you have to ignore all the other verses I've given you. We need to learn how to read the Bible. There's no contradictions in the Bible. If there was, I'd be the first one to put it down and just start living my own way. But these are the words of God. And like I said, we need to read the Bible and we need to learn how to understand the words. And the way you can do that is by reading and studying the whole Bible, not just parts here and there. If baptism is a must to get saved, then John 3.36 says, He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God. So right here it says, He that believes and is baptized, no. He didn't say anything about baptism. He said, He that believeth on the Son of God has everlasting life. Acts 10.43 to him give all the prophets witness that through his name whosoever believeth in him shall, shall receive remission of sins. Now, there's not there's no mention of baptism here, but it talks about you shall have life and you shall have forgiveness of sins. Now, either these two scriptures that I just read is just a lie, or what we read in Mark 16, 16 is exactly like I said it. He that believeth in whatever you want to put there. Water baptism just shows others what you have done, but it doesn't give you power to change you. Baptism does not give you the power to be changed. The Word of God does. Only believing in the Word of God can do that. Now let's talk about the Spirit coming in you or on you. Israel was not living for the Lord at all, and He pours out His fury on them, and He scattered them from their land. Then the Lord tells them that he was going to bring them back as a nation, but not because they deserved it. He was doing it to protect his name, he says. He didn't do it because they deserve it. None of us deserve salvation. None of us. E Ezekiel 36 verses 26 and 27. He's telling Israel this when he brought them back. A new heart also will I give you. And a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. And I will give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you. And cause you to walk in my statues. And you shall keep my judgments and do them. God is telling them that they needed to repent as a nation. And he would put the spirit in them. This is what they had to do. The Spirit came in them. That's what it's talking about. The Spirit came in them. Now we're going to see there's a difference between in and on. John 14, verse 26 through 20. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you, in you. Verse 18, I will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you, yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more, but you see me, because I live, you shall live also. At that day ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. Christians just don't believe. They know the Father. They don't just believe in Him. They know Him. Because He lives with us. He is in us. Can you comprehend that the Holy Spirit, which is Jesus, and who is Jesus? The Father. So we're talking about God. God. See if you can grab this. 
God lives in you. When you give your life to the Lord, when you give your heart to the Lord, God, God, the creator of heaven and earth, came to live in us when we accept him. This is the Holy Spirit that comes in you for salvation. Remember that. This is one of the main verses some religions use to show that you have to be water baptized. Acts 2.38 Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Peter said you have to repent, which he is saying you have to change your purpose in life and turn from sin to God. Repent. That's what it says. In Matthew 3, 2, it says, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Matthew 4, 17. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. There's more of this word, repent. Jesus tells us exactly what it means in Luke chapter 14, verses 26 through 30. It says, If any man come to me, and hate not his father and mother, and wife, and children, and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Now, this verse right here, the Lord is not telling us that we need to hate our family. He's, what he's saying here is, we need to put him first above everyone plus ourselves. That's what he's saying right here. Verse 27. And whosoever doeth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Verse 28. For which of you, intending to build a tower, sitteth not down first and counteth the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it? Lest happily, after he had laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that behold it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish now what it's saying here is before you give your life to the Lord make sure you know what you're going to have to give up so before someone gives their life to the Lord check and see what does the Lord want me to do what do I have to do to become His you know do babies do that when they're getting baptized are babies, are babies saying I'm giving my life to the Lord that's why I don't get too excited when I see young kids uh, going to be baptized there is no certain age of the accountability for kids some kids are a little smarter than others so that age could be 8 years old 12 years old but a certain age no but when young kids get baptized they say uh, they are giving their life to the Lord they haven't even been in life yet they haven't even been on the streets so the devil can tempt them with alcohol, drugs, sex, just life. I mean, life is wicked. I mean, they haven't even been out there. How do they know that they want to live for the Lord and not be running around with friends that do these things? So I don't get too excited when I see young kids getting baptized. Take the time period when he said this. They were just killed... They had just killed Jesus, and the people who were following Jesus fled and were hiding. Peter wanted those who were truly wanted to follow Jesus to get publicly baptized, even if it meant becoming an outcast. And yes, that's what it means a lot of times. When we, when we give our life to the Lord, we're not going to be popular people. Because this world, the world, is lost. And the Lord says many times, we're strangers. Once we become His, we're strangers in this world so he wanted them to publicly show what they were doing and back then even sometimes it cost them their lives but this is the reason why it says here that he wanted them to get baptized for this time period throughout the book of acts forgiveness is linked to repentance not baptism acts 319 repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be plotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Acts 5.31 
Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be the prince and a savior, for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. Acts 26, 20 But show first unto them of Damascus and at Jerusalem and throughout all the coasts of Judea and then to the Gentiles, that they should repent and turn to God and do works meet for repentance. So throughout, throughout the book of Acts, forgiveness comes with repentance. Doesn't say Any of these verses didn't say nothing about baptism. The Bible also shows that some who were baptized weren't saved. In Acts 8, verse 13, Then Simon Peter himself believed also. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which were done. Now let's go down to verse 18. And remember, Simon just got baptized. Let's go down to verse 18 through 22. And when Simon saw that through laying on of the apostles' hands the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money, saying, Give me also this power, that on whomsoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee. Christians don't perish. But right here, Peter said, Thy money perish with thee. Because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. Verse 21. Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter. For thy heart is not right. For thy heart is not right in the sight of God. So it's shown here he is not a born again. Even though he got baptized up here. Right here it's shown that he's not right with God. In verse 22 it says repent. Therefore of this wickedness, and pray God, if perhaps the thought of thy heart may be forgiven thee. So I show right here, this guy was baptized, but wasn't, wasn't saved. Didn't give his life to the Lord. Then you have those who were saved, and there's no mention of, being, of them being baptized. Matthew 9, 2. And behold, thou brought to him a man sick of the palsy, laying on the bed. And Jesus, seeing their face, said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, be of good cheer. Thy sins be forgiven thee. Now, when your sins are forgiven, then, they, then you're right with God. So right here he's telling them that he has become a believer because he had been healed. Also, there's a woman who entered the house where Jesus was and started to kiss his feet. And Jesus says in Luke chapter 7, verse 47 and 48, Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins, which are many, this is Jesus speaking to the people, are forgiven. For she loved much, but to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. But he said unto her, Thy sins are forgiven. Now in both these places, the Lord says your sins are forgiven. That means they're born again. None of them, nowhere in the Bible does it talk about these people getting baptized. If baptism was so important, he would have to be in there. I'm telling you, it would have to be in there if it's something that we have to do. Here's a Pharisee and a tax collector praying. And at Luke chapter 18, verses 13 and 14. But the tax collector stood at a distance and dared not to even lift his eyes to heaven as he prayed. Instead, he beat his chest in sorrow, saying, O oh God, be merciful to me, for I am a sinner. Verse 14, I tell you, this sinner... Not the Pharisee, not the religious leader. This sinner returned home justified before God. For those who exalt themselves will be humble, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. This is, this is when a, a person truly knows the way they've been living. They know it's been wrong, wicked. And when they get saved, they humble themselves before the Lord. They're not... They don't stand around like, look at who I am. They don't do that. If it is important, again, if it is important for us to be water baptized, to be saved, seems like it would show in these verses that I just read. Now we're talking about the Holy Spirit. When you get, give your life to the Lord, the Holy Spirit comes in you. That's what I've pointed out. But also pointing out baptism does not save you. 
And I've also pointed out there's people who've gotten baptized who are not saved. And that there's people who are saved who never got baptized. I mean, just like the thief on the cross, right next to Jesus, when Jesus was nailed to the cross, the thief next to him wasn't baptized, and Jesus said to him, Today you will be with me in paradise. 